A few weeks ago, the Mirror journalist David McDonnell wrote an article saying that Jose Mourinho will be sacked after the Manchester United game against Newcastle, regardless of the result. Now, Manchester United were 2-0 down, went on to win 3-2, and Mourinho was still Manchester United manager come Monday morning. That didn't happen. But there are still lots of questions being asked by many whether or not Jose Mourinho should be sacked. And this week, there have been a lot of reports coming out saying that Jose Mourinho is going to be backed by Manchester United in the January transfer window. Is that proof that Jose Mourinho is actually here to stay? So let's take a look at the reports. It all started from The Guardian and Jamie Jackson when he said that Jose Mourinho will be backed in January to strengthen Manchester United and that he wanted a new centre-back and that he wanted a new forward. And most importantly, he said that Mourinho will be back to the tune of up to £100 million. And these reports were followed up by Sky Sports, who said the same sort of thing, that Mourinho and Manchester United were in talks over transfer targets and that Mourinho wanted to bring in a new centre-back in the January transfer window. So it's not just The Guardian and Jamie Jackson, Sky Sports have followed it up as well. Now, obviously, Man United were after Harry Maguire in the summer, Toby Alderweireld, we tried to get Jerome Boateng as well. Lots of centre-back signing, well, targets anyway, that didn't happen. But both Sky Sports and The Guardian now suggesting that Manchester United are willing to back Jose Mourinho to sign a new centre-back in January if the right one becomes available. And the Manchester Evening News' is Samuel Luckhurst is saying the same story, that Mourinho wants more than one signing in the January transfer window, which would be the first time in over a decade that that's happened for Manchester United, and that he wants a new centre-back and that he wants a new forward. And they point towards the fact that Ed Woodward failed or decided against the transfer targets that Mourinho wanted in the summer, but they're suggesting that a U-turn has happened. Now, let's go back a few months. We all remember what happened in the summer. Yes, Manchester United spent 50 million on Fred, who, you know, in the last game against Everton was fantastic, but has struggled to settle in in a tough start to his United career. Then we have Diogo Dalot, a 19-year-old right back, left back, Fullback, signed from Porto, had a brilliant game against young boys, hasn't really played much, has been injured quite a lot. A new right back and a new central midfielder. Every United fan knew that going into the summer, centre back was our biggest priority. And we were linked with the likes of Toby Alderweireld, who's going into his last year of his Spurs contract now. Then you've got Harry Maguire, who had a brilliant summer at the World Cup with England. He had Jerome Boateng, which was a bit of a curveball, but still an established centre back. <laughs> And United needed one. But Ed Woodward decided that he knew more about transfers than Jose Mourinho and vetoed the transfers. And you saw what happened in the summer. It wasn't pretty. Mourinho was in a fucking bad mood the whole preseason. United started the season well against Leicester, but the, the wheels came off very, very quickly. Mourinho wasn't backed. He was undermined by the board. And he, the board made his job very difficult straight away. It was the worst possible start to the season for United as far as, in terms of preparations anyway. So for me, it makes the reports coming out this week a little bit strange. What do you make of these reports coming out that Mourinho might be back to the tune of 100 million? For me, the first point to make, why change now? Why would Manchester United change their stance on not backing Jose Mourinho in the summer to then decide a few months later, you know what, let's back him? Are you mad? United really are a poorly run club. Everybody knows that. And so much has to change behind the scenes for us to catch up with the likes of Man City and Liverpool, who are streaks ahead of us in terms of the, how the club is structured and run. But for United to not back Mourinho, you know what you're getting into with Jose Mourinho. People are going to say, yes, he spent loads of money, and he has spent loads of money. But he was undermined. He wanted a new centre-back. And with Mourinho, he creates teams and squads to win now, to win this season. Lindelof might be great next year, as he's shown in the next last couple of games against Juve and Everton. But he wasn't good enough for Mourinho right now, and that's why he wanted a new centre-back. But the board decided, the board who has no experience of football, decided they were better placed to make the footballing decisions at Manchester United. And it made United look like an absolute shambles. But making a U-turn in January would arguably be even worse than that. If you're going to make the decision, which was the wrong decision in, in the summer, to not back Mourinho, stick to it. Don't then decide a few months later, nah, you know what, let's just throw some more money at him. It's the wrong move. And United need to make their mind up. I mean, what the hell are they doing? Is Mourinho going to be staying past the summer? If he isn't, why would you give him money in January? If he is, why didn't you back him last summer? 
nothing really makes sense with these reports. And as is always the case with newspaper reports, there are conflicting reports. ESPN's Rob Dawson is suggesting that Man United are prepared to veto Mourinho's transfer targets again. And that even if he goes for younger players like Skriniar, Romagnoli, Milinkovic, that United aren't willing to back Mourinho and his targets. Now, if that is the case, then that would be United continuing what they did in the summer, which, as I said, was the wrong decision, but at least it will be the club sticking to one firm decision rather than yo-yoing and changing and completely deciding a few months later to then back Mourinho. Now, I want to know from you what you think about these reports in the comments below, but for me, there's a few points to take away from it. First and foremost, I've said it more than once, but Mourinho should have been backed in the summer, whether that was signing Alderweireld, Boateng, Harry Maguire. United shouldn't have undermined their manager in public like that and made his job 10 times more difficult than it was. You know, when you sign a manager like Mourinho, you know what you're getting into. Signing a deal with the devil, if you want to call it that. But he's a short-term manager who spends big to create winning teams now. And United, for the first couple of years, agreed with that. This summer, the board decided that they wanted to go back to the old-school United, signing young players, concentrating on bringing through the youth. If they were so important to United, we would never have hired Mourinho in the first place. So it's a massive U-turn, which doesn't really make sense to me. And making a U-turn now, I mean, United and Edward would have made a hell of a lot of poor decisions along, along the way. But to make a U-turn now, to a few months after publicly, not shaming, but I suppose humiliating Mourinho and showing the world that he's not the football manager of United, that he's a head coach, which is what he said he is more, more so now than a manager. United to then make a U-turn on that and then back him with 100 million would be an embarrassment. It would be such a shambles of a decision. United have made so many mistakes along the way, but backing Mourinho now in January after not backing him in the summer, that's another mistake I don't want to see United make. But what's your take on this? Would Mourinho get in 100 million in January? Would that be proof that he's staying at the club past this summer, past this January transfer window? Or would it be a desperate reaction from Ed Woodward to try and salvage anything from this season which is starting to slip away from Manchester United? Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And as always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button.